This college football coverage is sponsored by Bob Morkia of Edmond. Thank you, Michael. Uh, welcome, everyone. Um, it's been a busy week uh, out uh, recruiting and, and getting back from recruiting and uh, starting our bowl preparation. Um, I've also uh, attended the CEO Coach of the Year banquet where Randall Stevenson, uh, the CEO for AT&T, was just recently honored. So just now being able to get back and, um, and uh, give a press conference and move on, uh, going back, reflecting on the uh, Oklahoma State game, really it was much like I, I said after the game in, in the press conference. Uh, credit Oklahoma State made some key plays uh, down the stretch of the game to, to, to win it for them. Uh, I thought, um, you know, just as a, you know, overall offensively, we uh, ran the football well. Uh, couldn't, you know, didn't throw it very well. And at the end of the game, we needed to run it out, weren't able to do it. Um, Defensively, I uh, thought we played the run really well and uh, got beaten coverage a couple of key t times that really hurt us. And uh, then in, in a tight game, I made a poor decision to, to punt the ball again at the end of the game. I, as I said after the game, I was thinking gain, you know, knock another seven, eight seconds off the clock, try and gain five yards or so. Uh, we've covered, you know, haven't had an issue with any, especially inside the 50 yard line with pooch punts. Uh, but I opened the door, gave him the opportunity, and, and uh, they made the play to, you know, to tie the game and had the momentum there at the end. So again, that's that's all on me. Um, moving forward from it, uh, I feel uh, really positive in you know the way we've been recruiting. I feel uh, excited about what our guys have done in the you know three four practices so far. Uh, it's a real positive. Uh, obviously, getting Trevor back, uh, and he is. Practiced well. He has looked good after practice and felt good after practice. Uh, so that's moving in a positive direction. Um, other guys, some uh, a bunch of other guys won't practice until we get out to the bowl, uh, but are expected to play. They're all improving, uh, except uh, Geno Grissom is is probably a week or or ten days short of of his target date to return to play. So unfortunate for Geno being a senior. Not able to compete there, but the other guys are all uh, making good improvement. And uh, the one, you know, that'll be a question mark is just how Sterling has reacted all year. Um, he feels significantly different and better than he has. Um, we won't practice him, in, you know, much until we get him to the uh, bowl site as well. Uh, again, you know, the way that has reacted, though, it's, you know, that'll probably would be again. You know, we'll have to see once he gets in the game moment, is he able to to make the explosive plays and hold up, you know, so we'll have to see on that. But uh, the guys are working hard. Clemson is a, a really good team. Uh, started the year, you know, with a couple of losses in their first three games, but then went eight and one here uh, through the last part of the uh, season, uh, beating South Carolina there the, uh, the last game, uh, looking good doing it. Really admire their quarterback for having fought through that game like he did, fighting through a knee injury, playing with the brace and, and uh, really, uh, you got to, you know, the courage and, and is uh, really special there. And, uh, uh, you know, but, but again, uh, they're, they're a team that's uh, really good. Um, again, they uh, run in the football is, is uh, you know, they, they really do a great job of it, a lot of speed uh, in, in how, they, how they work. Um, excellent defense. Uh, Brent uh, Venables, everyone knows, is their coordinator. Uh, they've done a great job, uh, number one in, in, the, uh, in the country in total defense and up there in the top ten in, in every other category. Uh, some really special players also that, that are there, um, you know, the, some of the, in particular, in, in not, they're across the board, but their front seven, several are recognized. Uh, Anthony, their linebacker. Uh, Beasley, of course, the outside uh, D end is a great player, an All-American, two-time two All-American, I believe. Um, and then there are other inside guys, uh, Lawson in there, and Harris also do you know really good players up front and and tough. So um, anyway, so again, a, a, a big challenge. Dabo Sweeney and his staff have really done an excellent job there. Uh, you know, just again, just a year ago, winning a, uh, a BCS Bowl, and uh, anyway, now coming into the Citrus Bowl, um, uh, exciting matchup. Uh, I played in it one other time when we were at Florida. We played Penn State 
in, in uh, this bowl, and it was a really a great experience. Um, uh, everything first class, obviously, and everything that they do in putting the bowl on and a great venue to play in. Uh, so anyway, it's an exciting matchup. Has Samaje been able to practice and is he at all questionable for the bowl? Uh, he's expected to be back. I said Gino's the only one expected not to be. So um, he's improving. Uh, he hasn't practiced yet. Um, but uh, talking to him, he feels like he's making really good progress. Um, it just seems like the time, you know, since your last game and with the crunch with the game on the 29th, were you able to work with your young players like you normally did in most bowls? Uh, not as maybe as long as some some other bowls. I mean, you know, it's all different. But uh, but we got three, four days with them and, and got them, you know, a lot of good snaps. And and we also got more maybe in some other weeks uh, on bye weeks where we've gone out and scrimmaged with those guys a little bit. Have you been able to see enough out of Trevor to know whether he can be your starter or not at quarterback? Trevor, a quarterback, could he be your starter? Oh, absolutely. Uh, we expect him to be. Um, he's, you know, he's doing everything right now as as he always did, and and I think the the key part too is after practice, he's he's feeling good. You know, it isn't it isn't taking a toll on him. So I, I'm, you know, I think uh, through this time he's been lifting, running, getting his you know body back, and I, I so so far he's felt really good. Because you took so much time with him, did it? allow him to be almost 100% when he first hit the practice field last Saturday? Uh, probably. Again, I, those aren't decisions I have anything to do with. It's just when our doctors felt, you know, it was the right, it was right for him to return to play. And, uh, you know, and it, it, it took time and, and, and it took a lot of, you know, uh, there was a lot that went into it. So they're, you know, they finally felt it, it was right and, and gave him the opportunity. You expect Wilson and Hayes to jump back into the secondary? Uh, you know, uh, Julian, I, I, yeah, I apologize. I did say every, from the game everyone's expected, but Julian got hurt just two days ago in a one-on-one -on -one drill and separated his shoulder, so he won't be able to play. Um, uh, Quentin Hayes is practicing and is moving around. Uh, you know, he's, um, he's, he's made significant improvement. He has to make a little more to make sure, you know, he's able to run like we think he needs to. Is Brent running basically the same defense he used to run when he was here, or is it vastly different? Yeah, it's a lot of it's uh, the same and similar to to what we've done, you know, for quite a while here. Coach, you've always said it's kind of tough to go against past assistants, relative stuff like that. Some of your emotions are facing Brent. Yeah, he, he and I, uh, you know, just talking a week ahead of it, we're, we're actually texting. We're we're kind of both kind of hoping it didn't come to that, but. In this world, you know, too, or in, in this coaching life, the longer you're in it, you're bound, it's bound to happen more and more. The more coaches leave, and you know, and and as you, you know, more years you're in it, it's going to happen. So, but you know, when someone's been with you that long, you know, I, I said it goes back to me recruiting them to go to Kansas State, and then you know, wanting, you know, trying to lobbying to hire them as a full time assistant from being a GA and. And being a graduate assistant and then 13 years here, it's a long history of competing with somebody, you know, and doing the same things. And, and uh, you know, so that there, there's a lot of, there's close ties there when, when you've done it that long with someone. How, how good is this Clemson defense compared to others you've faced throughout the season? Here? It's as good as any of them that, that we've faced and, and better than, you know, and maybe the, maybe the best. I, I always have a hard time saying anything's just the best, but... Um, you know, when you look at the talented players, and, and, and then Brent does a great job with them, and their experience group. And I think that's always maybe a, something that maybe gets a little overlooked and people just talk about talent, but usually when the guys are older, it makes a difference too, and they've got a lot of older players that are really good. Brent had, had told us last week uh, that, you know, he was, he was still kind of back and forth even when he was in Atlanta at the airport, and he was still talking to you, texting you back and forth. It sounded like you put on a really hard sell to, to try and keep him not to get Well, of course I would. I mean, um, you know, I always had great confidence in Brent, and, uh, and we always had a great working relationship. So, um, you know, those aren't, you know, but, every, uh, you know, what I say the other day, I think, um, you know, one of my favorite, I don't know the whole scripture, but every, everything has, every, to everything there is a season. To, you know, there's a time for everything. And, and you know, it was, it was the right time for Brent, you know. And just like when I, 
I had a hard time leaving Kansas State after seven years with Coach Snyder. But you know, you with every move, a little bit different. You know, you learn some different things. You get different experiences, and and uh, so it was. You know, it, it was. There were no hard feelings. You know, it was just okay. You know, I, I get it, and and uh, you know, so I'm happy for him. And we've we've stayed in touch, and we share ideas still. You know, we're back and forth on the phone or sharing tape. And uh, won't be this these few weeks, but you know we have you know. So so it's over, and he, he's taking that job. He's doing well now. I assume you have a great appreciation for what he's done because, like you said, you went to Florida, left behind a lot of things that you knew that were coming. Yeah, there. yeah, and 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 again, you 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 because you're such good friends, you pull for him. You know, you're um, you know I'm elated when when I see him doing well, and you know if I'm watching him on TV, you know you're rooting for him and. It, I was a little tied up with the South Carolina game. I didn't root too hard. I was just kind of one of those games you can't, someone's going to win, so it's, that part's positive. But uh, so anyway, but uh, you know, he's, he's, he's done an excellent job. Uh, Bo got the Youngstown State job. What are uh, your thoughts on going back Yeah, to I, it's exciting. I'm excited for Bo. I, I don't, you know, I'm sure the, the good part of it's a family decision, that it's a great fit that way. Um, not only for his family back there, but you know, obviously, I guess for Mary Pat and his children and all that, it's a, you know, it's a, a positive, positive situation that way. And um, I know Youngstown just talking to my brother and mother back there, everybody's elated. And um, you know, Bo's got a great track record, and of course, he fits Youngstown and, and what they're about. And so I, I think it's a, hopefully it, it, it ends that way. But I mean, I think it's a great, you know. Uh, you know, situation for everybody, and and I'm excited for him. I, he'll he'll do an excellent job. Is your brother going to stay on the staff? Well, you'd have to ask Bo that. That's uh, I don't. You know, I know. You know, they'll. I'm sure he'll they'll they'll meet at some. You know, here at some point, and 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 see see where it goes. He's got an interesting president of his school now. Uh, yeah, have you you'd. Ever, have you ever thought of? I mean, nothing gets boring. Well, I, 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 listen, I, you know, I, but if you ever wanted a I'm very coach. happy with my president for sure. Uh, but it would be different having a, uh, a president that's, um, you know, that's won whatever what coach has won. What's Jim's won? I don't know, four, maybe four at Youngstown State, one at Ohio State. I'm not sure, but, um, but I, I think I think that'd be a real positive. I mean, you know, because especially when he's done it at that school where he knows the ins and outs of how he did it, and and I'm sure Bo will, you know, confer with them and and uh, you know. But I and I've known Coach Tressel a long time and really respected, admire him. He's a, a great person to. I'm sure he'll be a great person to work with for Bo. Added three junior college kids. This uh, this morning, can you talk a little bit about what Jamal Didi and Will will bring to the table? Yeah, they're all guys that I I think can you know that we feel can make uh, of course a contribution immediately. Um, you know Jamal um, in the offensive line. When you look at the, we're lo losing you know three or four starters, however you want to look at it. He's a guy that can play multiple positions in there. Um, you. Uh, Again, look at Will uh, Johnson. It's a guy that, that really has uh, excellent speed and coverability. Um, hopefully can come in and make a difference. D.D. Westbrook, again, a, an explosive, exciting receiver that has, you know, been making big plays and, and, you know, something we need more of. Oliver Luck. Uh, looks like he's leaving West Virginia. Boy, where have I been? I, don't, I didn't know that Just either. Just happened today. Just happened today. He's going to work for the NCAA. But it affects everybody else because he's the Big 12 rep on the on the committee. You got any ads you'd like from the Big 12? You'd like to? I mean, who would you nominate to? Yeah. Well, Joe Castiglione has as positive and good a reputation and experience in the business as anybody. He's, he's already on the basketball selection committee. You might as well put him on the football one and save some money. Have him do two for one. <laughs> Coach, any communication with uh, DeMarco Murray since his surgery? Kind of your thoughts on the season he's had? For the you know, I, I haven't. I texted DeMarco earlier in the year and, you know, just excited for him and how positive it's been for him and to stay healthy. And and that was several weeks before this injury. But uh, and I haven't recently. So I'm sure we'll connect here eventually. Well, with the Big 12 being left but out. But very proud of him and, and how he's, what a great year he's had. 
the Big 12 being left out in the Final Four. If, what's your thoughts on the yeah. talk about the championship game and things? I think you know. I think there's a lot to be considered. Definitely that our presidents and you know commissioner and ads will really discuss on what our options. But but I think too you have to you have to have a little perspective on it that in that, you know, had Florida State, you know, they win by two points. If they lose by two points, you know, there's a spot. If Ohio State has a tight game, would they have jumped somebody? You know, who knows? You don't know. Um, you know, I think that probably the misleading part of it was sort of how it happened in the last two weeks in, in that TCU gets pushed up to three and they win by 50 and get pushed back to five. You, you know, so I think maybe you know maybe that part was a little misleading that people have a hard time understanding. But but you know again, if if a couple of those teams lose, you might have two in it. That's a possibility. I don't you know I don't know you know, but in the, it, it, it's happened that way, and you can't expect to win a championship game 59 to nothing very often, which the way Ohio State won. You know, so. I don't know. I'm sure they'll consider all of those factors. Do you think the conference should change naming co-champions if two teams tie? Um, that again has, to, I think, is something that you know should be considered. You know, uh, and I'm, I'm sure they will be, be because of this situation. You know, I'm, I'm sure the selection committees. You know, if being a conference champion, you get. I'm not saying they do it this way, but if that that gives me so many points. Well, if there's two of them splitting it, you're obviously hurting yourself, you know. So, uh, again, uh, probably something that needs to be considered, yeah. I think when it happened, there was a lot of emotion involved and, and a lot of statements made from a lot of different people about expansion, championship games, um, you know, one true champion, whatever. Is, is there, with some time, have you kind of changed your thinking on all of those things, whether you should add members, whether you should have a championship game? Um, yeah, it, 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 it definitely, when it all happened, and even now, it gives me a little bit of pause that we need to really consider what, what are our options, you know. Um, I'm not going to sit here publicly and, you know, be strong about it one way or the other. I, I don't think that's right, but I think everyone needed to take back and, and look at it, you know. But, but even as I said earlier, the other perspective is, you know, how it happened at the end, you know, may not always work that way. You know, so and you and you may be fine. You know, other years you could be fine with it. So, but 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 the other, you know, as, as Chris brought Chris brought up the uh, the other part is the one true champion. It may need to be, and you know, we we promote it, and let's then it may need to happen that way in in order for the selection committee to say, all right, the, here here's the one, the the one that deserves it. I know you've got a lot of stuff going on now with recruiting and practices. And is is this kind of this next week when you start getting into talking with your players more about their, that are thinking about leaving early? Oh, I've already had uh, discussions with them, um, but we will again once their NFL grades come back on what their projections are. I, I think that's an important part of it, and uh, because regardless of what's out there, you know, people who want to be the you know the analysts, they they don't really know, and that, there's been evidence of that every year. So. You know, let's get the people who do it, their opinion, and then, then to me, there's then we have more discussions. So um, whether that be before the game or after the game, you know, it just depends on when we get those back. Do you feel like with with Doriel, he's still up in the air on what he's going to do? I, I feel as though he is, um, you know, but uh, uh, that's something we'll continue to talk about. Um, uh, so yeah, I don't, I don't, at least I don't feel that he's made a decision yet. Where school gets five evaluations this year? You know, I, I think they have, and I, I, I've got five or six in. And until they tell me I can't have one, some, they kick one back. I'm going to send in as many as I, you know, as I feel are, you know, legitimate that have a chance to be in the first day. And that's, you know, that's the, the, the you know, it's probably an easy evaluation for them. Some people they know aren't going to be in the first day. That's all they got to tell you is you're, you're not. You know, I don't see you going in the first three rounds, you know, or whatever, how many, I know they've changed the days, but they've sent it back before that way, meaning you don't have, we don't think you'd be picked in the first three rounds. Does it usually work that the guys that they feel are going to be drafted the highest, you get those evaluations back quicker than other guys? Um, they all come in at 
I think it's it's however order they get them, they receive them in, how quickly they can get them back to each school. That's uh, so what I what I've been told before. Is David Smith still part of the team? He is, uh, but David has been uh, uh, granted permission to to see what he wants. You know, if there's something that fits him. Uh, elsewhere, and he's in good graces with us. He's working hard at practice, and if that's what he wants to do next semester, then you know we'll support him in that way. He's been a he's been a great young man. Are there any players that you could tell us about that may, might not be eligible for the bowl game or have decided to transfer out of your program since the end of the season? Um, just the ones you know about. I've already, like I said, I've already dismissed Derek Woods from the team, and and the others you know about know it right now. Uh, I don't have any other news that way as far as grades or anything like that. Um, you know, if we if we do, I'll eventually say it. But you know, that, that there's nothing else at this point. How do you guys bounce back from the loss? So they you know, they come right back and take a couple of days. How are they? Well, again, it's it's been more than a couple of days. So they've been lifting. They've been in finals. Um, you you review it with them, what the coaches have. And uh, you go about trying to improve, going back to work and getting on the field and, and uh, you know, and competing again. And, you know, young people, uh, they do it pretty quickly. Coach, how, how important are these extra practices, the development things to look at the next year and the future? I, they, they help. Um, you know, uh, just like even I said earlier, even some of the off weeks, we got extra time with our young players. And, and not just young, even just guys that might be sophomores or juniors that haven't been on the field as much. So they get more, they're getting more snaps and more opportunities. And, and uh, you know, even a day like today, we'll, we'll, do, we'll do our normal Tuesday pra practice of going against, uh, you know, preparing for Clemson. But we may at the end take 15 plays and have all the younger guys in there at the end going against each other, you know, just to finish practice. Uh, take a little extra time since they don't have classes and things like that. So we, we find our ways to get them more work. Coach, so many of your players in Texas get to go to their home state and play in front of their family and friends. What's it like to see Eric and Ty get to go back to Florida and play? Yeah, I'm sure it's great for them. Um, they've come, you know, two great families. And uh, so I, I'm sure it'll be exciting for them to, you know, to be back there closer to relatives and friends, you know, to, to be around. And I'm sure Eric will be and Ty will be giving some tours to everybody. But, um, but it, you know, again, it's a, it's a great place to go. I, like I said, I've been in the, in the bowl game. They, they do it right. It's a fantastic experience and great place. And, um, you know, so it'll, you know, and playing an excellent opponent. So it'll be exciting for them. I know Bowlesby was pretty adamant that the league needed to get a bowl presence in Florida. What does that do for you guys recruiting-wise? Well, I, I think um, it, it helps you with that presence down there. Um, you know, it, it, you really can't do anything recruiting-wise because you're not allowed to con have contact with them off of your campus, you know, or because it's a dead period. So even it's not like you could have them to practice and, and, and start a relationship with anyone. So it, so you're a little bit limited. But I, but I think being down there for, you know, six days or whatever it is, you know, having that presence down there, you know, would, would be positive. Is that is that that's not a new rule, is it? I mean, because when you were in New Orleans last year, you could have kids come by and watch your practices, right? They they could watch, but we couldn't have any dialogue with them. So then then you're you feel or you're putting them off that they came and watched you, and they didn't even come over and talk to me. Well, you know, I'm not, and I, I'm not saying any school does break the rules and does it, but we're pretty strong with our compliance. And well, and me, I'm if I'm not allowed to do it, I'm not going to do it. So. So anyway, so there, there is the conflict of you have, you have them at practice, but you're not a, you're not allowed to visit with them. So then, how do they receive that? It's kind of you know, of course, you tell them ahead of time that because of these rules, we're not able to. So understand that, and I think they do. You know, they get it. But you, I mean, it, it seemed to help you last year just having those kids. I mean, you finished strong in the New Orleans area last year. Yeah, uh, I'm trying to think though. I don't know if how many of them were actually. Well, yeah, I guess yes. I know uh, Dwayne. Yeah, that's right. They, they did come by. So it. You know, it, it was, yeah, it did work out, you know, in a positive way. So do you just have to work through the high school coaches, say, hey. Well, here's the thing. If we, if we have them come, it has to be open to everybody, to the public. And then, you know, how many Clemson people are coming and how many who knows what, you know. So uh, anyway, so there's, the, there's a little bit of a.
conflict there to work through. Bob, when you, you've had some struggles at receiver this year, did that make getting a guy like Dee vital for you guys this year? Well, I mean, it, it's um, – I, I I think that's probably obvious. Uh, maybe I don't. I, how am I gonna? I don't want to duck the question. But when you go recruit a junior college guy, you feel he's going to come in and, and impact you. So uh, you know, it it was. Um, you know, we feel he can he can give us a, a boost there for sure. Well, the guy that sort of hurt you the most in Bedlam five days later gets in massive trouble, uh, gets kicked off the team. Even when it's not one of your guys, in the face of what we've seen throughout sports the last six, eight months, is this just one more teaching moment for you with your guys? Do you ignore it? Do you bring it up? What do you? No, nah, well, you, it, you can't ignore it, and and it is. It's uh, you hate it. It's uh, sad in in every way, wrong in every way, and uh, so no, I, I you do have to continually put. Uh, these moments in front of players to learn from you know. F- you know what's acceptable, what isn't, and and you know other people's mistakes. You have to, you can't, you've got to pay attention to it. You know, and uh, you know, and then so we're we're you know, and I'm not the only. I think coaches are constantly uh, putting the different incidents in front of players of of all you know in in all shapes and forms, and and trying to educate and and uh, develop players. You know, and and. Uh, and even talking to them with that if, you know, if, if you don't know all the underlying parts of everybody's lives, if there are, is anything, we, we have, you know, we have uh, a team of counselors and psychologists that are part of the athletic department to, to make sure you're asking for, for help if, in, in any form if, if there's something that isn't, you know, what it needs to be with you. When you talk to guys either in a group setting or even one-on-one conversation you have about perils that are out there and avoiding things. What's their response? What do they tell you? I mean, what do they? Well, they, they, they understand, um, you know, they, uh, and, and we do a lot of it and, and, uh, you know, that they, they, they've got to run from situations and, and, and the, you know, when something, what I talk a lot about is you, you know, the climate and it, when it's, if it's turning bad and I, and in any kind of case, you better get out of it. You know, you better find your way to, to, Diffuse it or be gone, and because it isn't going to work, you know it's just it's uh, you need to you need to avoid you know the any any kind of situation like that. Bob, Remove much, yourself from it. I'm sorry. How much contact <coughs> did you have with Joe Mixon this during the course of the season? I know he wasn't with you, but I, I take it. Yeah, no, but he came by the office, um, you know, a couple times a week. A couple, you know, whether it be with Coach Gundy, with me. Um, you know, just to see us and let us know how he was doing. We get daily grade reports and academic reports on him. They have been outstanding. Um, everybody that's working with them uh, has positive things and remarks that they send us uh, about how he's worked and performed. So, um, you know, and then, like I said, he's come by just to, you know, to visit with us. You know, like I said, a couple times a week with Coach Gundy, probably more than that. So, um, He's he's you know he's done about you know everything that we've asked him to do. You fully expect to have him next year. Well, we'll see you know when next year comes you know when this when we get back next semester where it's at again he's done everything that he could possibly do to you know to to improve his situation. Now will he be allowed to practice with you in the spring? Again, we'll see once we get back you know in the next semester. You, Bob. I mean, I, I know you deal with discipline issues and giving guys second chances and believe in that. But when it's this much of a firestorm and you see it keep coming in the news, has this been a little bit more difficult for you to deal with just personally, knowing that you you're giving a guy a second chance that everybody's kind of? Well, it, it always is. But I, 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 what you have to realize, though, um, there, all situations are different. Um, you know, his is different than than others, and others are different than you know. Everything isn't the same, so you can't cover it with one brush. But in in his circumstance, um, as I'm not just talking about him and all my players, they're not just commo- they're not commodities to me. They're 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 someone's child, their children. They're they're I look at them as 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 kids, and um, you know, and and I. 
have a hard time just casting them away. And, and uh, so, you know, depending on the situation, because I have casted guys away, depending on situations, you, you just do what you feel, you know, is, is, um, you know, is right and or what the university feels should happen. I'm always in agreement with the university. And, and again, so, uh, you know, there's, you know, in, in all cases, they're all different and you just deal with them the best you can. But I, I, I have to be in, in some ways sensitive because they're different to me than they, may, than they are to you and, and to the public. I see them every day. And I may know what's, you know, or have a better feeling what's in them as a person and, and a young man than, than maybe the, someone else may. And so, you know, and, that, and you do your best. And I, I, again, I think all coaches try to. Bob, do you expect to have Frank Shannon back next year? Um, uh, yes, if uh, the way if he continues to do uh, what he's supposed to, he's uh, serving his suspension. And from what I understand, that once that's lifted, he, he would be allowed to return. Is his suspension through next summer? Is that right? I am, from what I understand, uh, it's through sometime in May. Okay. Well, how, uh, during games, how much do you interact with whoever on your headsets? Every coach on the staff, anybody beyond that, a limited number, who's, who's yeah, in your it, ear? Just, Is it everybody on the staff? Yeah, whoever's on the headsets. Mm -hmm. Do you, uh, when you have to make a decision like you made on the punt return, it's a limited time, quick decision. Do you get input from other people or somebody? Or yeah, do they sometimes. Leave you, or do they leave you alone? And no, they'll, they'll, they'll input. And uh, in fact, Coach Bullware, even without being on the headphones, he, he didn't want to punt it. And he was right. So in the end, I told you why I did and went with my gut, and it, was, it didn't work out. Did that, has that made you change in any way, the process of any way, in terms of how you communicate, like give Jay or whoever that's adamant about a belief a bigger voice or condense? Uh, they it? always have it. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I, uh, my guys know I seek their input all the time. So, you know, they, 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 they always can do that, and they could the other day.